What's going on, y'all? Your boy Darius the Gray here, back again for another video, and this time we are reviewing Loki season two, episode one. I believe it's called Ouroboros, which is uh, named after a character in this show, in fact. Um, so, yeah, man, Loki season two is here. It is the first season two of a Marvel Disney Plus show, which is interesting to say. You know, like we've had so many Disney Plus Marvel shows, but yet none have gotten a season two. Until today, I'm gonna go ahead and give you my, you know, brief thoughts, my review on this episode. There's gonna be some light spoilers here, so if you haven't seen it, of course, it's gonna be some spoilers. Thinking about my feelings on the first season, right? I thought it was pretty good. I thought Loki was probably the best of the. It's not the best. I think Falcon Winter Soldier is the best of the Marvel Disney Plus show, in my opinion. It's my favorite one. But I think Loki's, like, right there after it, you know? Marvel Disney Plus shows are not that great. They're not. Like, I think a few of them are actually, like, really good, and then the rest are just, like, they're just not it. Especially, like, Secret Invasion, my God, was, like, awful. It was, it was such a disappointment. My hope is that because of how good Loki Season 1 was, that it won't fall to the same pitfalls as the rest of the Disney Plus shows have. Like, Loki Season 1 is not perfect at all, but, like I said, it's one of the higher tier uh, shows. If you might remember from last season, right, Loki and Sylvie went to the end of time, met He Who Remains, Jonathan Majors, right? And, you know, he, he was like, hey, look, y'all should run the thing, you know? And Sylvie was like, nah, tried to kill him. You know, Loki tried to stop her. She kicked him through a time door. She killed He Who Remains. And he was just like, well, you done messed everything up. Now all my variants, all my evil variants are coming to cause havoc. And that's where we pick up, you know? Like, Loki was in what we thought was a different TVA. But really, he was just in the past. It showed us in this first episode he was in the past because they introduced the concept of time slipping. Which is basically Loki, you know shifting through the present to the past uh or sometimes even the future and it's a very horrifying effect by the way it looks painful but my one gripe about that whole you know idea that whole concept is that it kind of introduces another confusing layer of how time travel works in the mcu right like end game had its rules you know your your past can't affect your present you know, or your future, whatever the hell Smart Hulk was saying, were like, you know, anything you did in the past is not going to affect, you know, the present, the future. It's different. You know, it creates just branch timelines or whatever the hell. But in this episode, Loki can go to the past, talk to somebody, and then in the present, like, concurrently, they suddenly remember having that conversation with Loki. And it's just like, wait a minute, but I thought the past couldn't affect... Like, I, 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 feel, I feel like that Spongebob, you know, his arms, he's like, what? I, it's kind of confusing. I know you could say, you know, time works differently in the TVA. That's what Mobius said in season one, right? But it feels like, to me personally, they should be clearer about the time travel and multiverse rules. And I hope by the end of this season, we actually have a clearer understanding of that. Because between the first season of Loki, what if Multiverse of Madness... Quantumania, I feel like we still don't fully understand how time travel works in the MCU. And if you're big, you know, the overarching saga is the multiverse saga, dealing with alternate universes, alternate timelines, all that stuff. Feels like you should have it down packed of like what your rules are. Like obviously anytime you're dealing with multiverse stuff and like time travel, it gets a little messy, but like Look at the DC, you know, universe. Like, look at DC's animated stuff, or even, like, their stuff on CW with Flash and all that stuff. Like, their time travel rules, and they're generally consistent. Even, like, the Flash movie, as disappointing as that was, right? Even that, they kind of made, you know, a set time travel rule, and they stuck to it. I hope Marvel does that. I hope we have a clearer picture of that. I also want to shout out Kei Kwan in this episode, because he was fantastic. He was so charming. He was so, you know, like... I feel like the writing for him was like for his character was really good, and I think the acting was just a perfect. It was a perfect, you know, blend of writing, acting. He was so charming. He was so charismatic. Um, playing the character of Orboros, aka Ob, he was like this, you know, super smart technician guy. And I hope we get a lot more of him throughout this season because he was he was great. And like I haven't seen every uh, what was it called? 
Everything, everywhere, all at once. I have not seen that. I know he's good in it. He got like a, uh, he, he got an Oscar for it, right? Best Supporting Actor. I've literally only have ever seen him in Indiana Jones, you know, Temple of Doom, a short round. So like, this is like my second time seeing him, you know, in something. And I like, I really enjoyed him in this. His chemistry with both Mobius and Loki, fantastic, man. Tom Hiddleston himself, you know, as Loki. I mean, dude's been playing Loki for over 10 years now, right? He's got a lock on how to play Loki. He, like he's he's amazing at his job, and like it's I I always love watching him play Loki because I know that behind the scenes he's like a big fan of the character. He's like really deep into the character. Like, like I remember over uh, like pandemic, you know, like he did an interview with uh, I forgot who it was, but Anthony Mackie and Sebastian Stan were there. And he was just like talking about how you know during Loki during the making of it he had like. Like, like a whiteboard explaining you know Loki's character arc and different stuff and it's just like he really understands the character man and like he obviously loves playing the character like some people you know playing a character this long will probably get tired of it and want to be done but I feel like Tom Hiddleston this type of guy who like he'll play Loki as long as you allow him to and I really appreciate that because it's a very interesting character and he does a great job um, portraying him and the different facets of him like yeah I remember this is a different Loki than the one that died in Endgame, right? Like, it's different Loki with now different experiences, but it still feels like Loki, even though there's, like, subtle, you know, differences in just, like, his personality, right? And it's it's great to see. And the biggest thing that I liked that this episode did was it really showed the stakes, man, because, like, the TVA is, like, falling apart because all the timelines are branching after Sylvie messed everything up, you know, like, they're having power surges and whatever, and it's just, like... They really let you know very early on, yo, some serious stuff is going on right now. And I appreciate that because most Disney Plus shows, they kind of drag their feet because it's interesting. Most Disney Plus shows are like six episodes, right? They tend to drag their feet, you know, towards the start. And then when they're at like episode four or five, they're just like, damn, we have like one episode left. Let's just sprint to the finish. And it's just like the pacing is just not good at all. But my hope is that with them starting off firmly setting the stakes so that you know what's going on, you know, they're not dragging their feet. I hope that the pacing of this season is good. And like by the end of it, I don't feel like we were shortchanged or whatever, because that's often how I feel about these shows. Um, so overall, right, I'll give this episode out of five. I give it like a solid, I give it a solid four out of five. It's a pretty damn good start, you know. I wasn't really that excited for this season going in. Like, I just, maybe Secret Invasion and just how bad of a taste it left in my mouth at the end there. I just was not excited for any Disney Plus show. But watching this episode, it definitely got me more into being excited for the rest of the season, you know? Because this show, one thing I love about the show is just how different it feels from everything else. Like, it's got that sci-fi, you know, like Doctor Who style feel to it. And it just makes it feel different than anything ever we've had, anything else we've ever had in the MCU. So I enjoyed it, man. Uh, anyway, let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Um, do me a favor as well. Click that like button. Get the likes up, man. Helps the channel out. Subscribe if you haven't already. I'm trying to get 300 subscribers. That's my new little mini goal on the road to 1,000. So click that subscribe button. Help me out there. Uh, click the notification bell. That way you know every time I upload a video and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.